In this chapter, we're going to take the next step and learn how to use the basic mixing functions in Cubase. We'll take a quick look at how to set levels, adjust panning, use equalization, apply effects, and select an appropriate mixdown format. Let's take a moment and look at the production cycle to see how the mixdown phase fits in. There are no hard and fast rules, but here's how the process usually flows. The first step is tracking. Tracking is the process of recording individual parts, like the instrument track we set up in Chapter 4. The second step is normally overdubbing. That's the process of adding additional tracks to your basic recording. The next is often editing. This can be cleaning up unwanted noises, fixing MIDI notes and multiple takes into a single performance, called compositing or comping. We'll cover compositing in more detail in Chapter 6. Then we'll move to Mixdown. During Mixdown, all the tracks, effects, and edits are combined into a single file. For music production, this file is usually a stereo file. We typically mix one song at a time. Finally, after all the songs for a collection are mixed, they need to be mastered for duplication and distribution. We'll look briefly at mastering in Chapter 10. In an analog studio, the engineer mixed a song by playing a multi-track recorder through a physical mixing desk and recording them on a two-track tape machine, all in real time. In Cubase, the actual mix-down process consists of exporting a multi-track file through a virtual mixing desk onto a two-track file. Since we've finished editing, we can resize the track height in the project window to give us more room to work. Let's call up the project mixer. Click this icon to open the extended view of the mixer. We can select a variety of items to display in the extended view. Use the icons on the left side of the window to set all the channels to the same type of display. Let's switch to meters. Now, begin playback and adjust the levels of each track until you get a satisfactory rough mix. You'll probably have to make small changes as we adjust equalization and effects. There are very few hard and fast rules about mixing and lots of options. Be sure to read the user's manual, visit the Steinberg knowledge base, and visit the Cubase community forums for detailed advice about mixing techniques. You can create group tracks to control large numbers of elements at once. We'll use this feature more in later chapters. You can also hold down the command key, select several tracks, and link them. Now their faders move together. I'm going to start by setting the drums so the loudest parts are just under the peak level. Now I'll bring in the piano and guitar. I'll pan the piano off to the left and the guitar off to the right to create a wider stereo image and make more room for the voice in the middle. Next, I'll use Equalization, or simply EQ, to help the tracks fit together better. EQ is simply a filter that can be adjusted to boost some frequencies and cut others. You can think of it as an elaborate tone control. 
you can use EQ correctively to fix problems or artistically to create effects. Let's use EQ to fix one problem. If I solo the acoustic guitar, we see that the sound has too much bass in it. Most likely I put the microphone too close to the sound hole during recording. We can use EQ to fix this. Start by clicking the E button on this track to open its editor. The editor has insert effects along the left side, EQ in the center, send effects to the right, and a set of track controls to the far right. We'll look at effects in just a moment. The EQ can adjust up to four frequency ranges at once. Begin by turning on each of the EQ sections. Each band has three controls, Gain, Frequency, and Q. Use the Gain control to boost or cut the volume of a specific frequency. Use the Frequency control to select what tonal range you want to adjust. Use the Q control to shape how tightly or how broadly these adjustments are applied. There are two rules of thumb for using EQ. First, if possible, try to get the sound you want by cutting rather than boosting. This will leave you with a cleaner mix when you're finished. Second, try to avoid using more than six decibels of gain unless you're trying for an extreme effect. If you have to use a lot of EQ to fix the tone, you can probably get a better sound by using a different microphone or a different microphone placement. I've learned that many acoustic guitars have extra bass sound centered around 150 to 200 hertz. So I'm going to start in that area to fix the problem. Here's another trick. If you're trying to eliminate a problem frequency, you may be able to locate it faster by using an extreme boost and then fishing with the frequency control, like this. There's the problem. That's the frequency range which is too loud. Now that I've identified it, I'll use a subtle cut to ease it out of our track. Let's listen to it with the rest of the mix. If you want to do a quick A to B comparison of your EQ adjustment, Use this bypass button to cycle the EQ in and out. We're almost ready for our first mix down, but let's return to the subject of effects. There are literally thousands of effect plugins that you can use with Cubase. The more common types include reverberation, delay or echo, dynamic or volume control, and modulation effects like chorus and flanger. You can add effects to a track in two basic ways. You can insert the effect across the entire signal path and run 100% of the track through the effect. Or you can set up a separate effect track and then send only some of the track through it for a more blended or subtle effect. Each method is useful in different situations. For example, if I want to use a compressor to help control the volume of a track, I need the compressor to control that entire track. So I'll run the entire track through the compressor by using the insert method. However, if I want to use an effect in a more subtle fashion, which is common with reverb, I'll set it up as a send effect. This allows the process signal and the original to blend. Let's insert a compressor across the drum track to help tame some of the louder portions. Open the drum track editor. Create an insert effect. Compressors will be found on the Dynamics menu. Turn on the effect. And let's select an appropriate preset and close the editor. We'll apply just a little reverb to all of the tracks to help create the illusion that they're all recorded in the same acoustic space. This will help tie our mix together. 
Be careful with reverb. It's easy to overdo it. Okay, we've adjusted the levels, EQ, pan, and effects. Let's generate our first mix down. Open the file menu and select Export Audio. The export dialog allows us to choose the quality and the location of our mixed file. A stereo WAV file will be the highest resolution, but it'll also be very large. Since this is just a rough mix and we may want to send it by email to other musicians, let's mix it down in the MP3 format. That will be good enough quality for now and a small enough file size to move around easily. Select Format here. Fill in the ID tag information. Make sure the file path is correct. Let's use the desktop. You can have Cubase automatically add the mix file back into the project. Let's save this option for our final mix down later. Finally, click Export. Here's our first mixed stereo file. Let's move on to Chapter 6, where we'll see how to take our demo to the next level using some of the advanced features in Cubase.